software has always been one of the holy grails of programming. Um, programmers have always had this dream of just creating small applications and having them work together. Uh, Apple started this trend with System 7, and now with OpenDoc, they're taking it a step further. If you look back at the evolution of the software industry over the last, say, 10 years or so, uh, what happened was people were, were dealing with graphical user interfaces up to this point, right? And once upon a time, there was, there was a place where the operating system didn't provide you graphic system to run everything in. Everyone wrote their own. And everyone imagined that they were going to have to keep control of that layer of what was going on in the system to, to get their program to be unique. Right? And then things like the Macintosh and Windows came along, and there was a graphic system and a Windows system, and it was standard. And it turned out customers really liked that, and you didn't have to do that work. So it was easier to get those kind of programs to market than it ever was before. Well, now we're looking at the next step. We've gotten past graphical user interfaces. We now have fast machines. We have object-oriented technology that's mature, instead of being something that was kind of in research labs. And now we can take those technologies and move the, the bar one step higher. We can move it to a place where things can be plugged together very, very easily, very, very tight integration, something we couldn't do before. And you see these standard architectures like OpenDoc appearing because it's time to move the bar up, to have a standard way to do that so everyone can work together at this new level of capability. Monolithic applications are becoming almost impossible to, to execute effectively. To rev those applications, which um, in some cases are more than a million lines of code is a tremendous effort. We essentially approach a, a situation of diminishing returns in terms of uh, the amount of effort it goes in to rev them to get them out the door. OpenDoc is going to affect developers in a number of ways. First of all, simply by breaking up their applications into smaller pieces, they make their release cycle simpler. And by having a really well-architected well-defined set of interfaces between those pieces, they reduce the design job that they have to do. Each component is on its own separate development cycle of perhaps three or six months rather than two years or three years. We had one team at Claris very quickly pull together this bear. We had another team pull together the inspector, really a team of one. And we had another team of one pull together these buttons. At the same time, parallel, Another team was working on the card part, the doodle part, and the scrapbook. So we had a real factoring going on. And we, um, because of OpenDoc, we were able to develop in parallel. And we were able to put the people who could do the bear really well on the bear. And they didn't have to be experts in graphics to make the uh, doodle part work. Many developers, in fact, I, I, I'd say essentially all developers, are also going to find that they can get functionality that they need from other developers. So they don't have to do it all themselves anymore. Component technologies like OpenDoc are a tremendous help because we can simply support OpenDoc and the other application vendors will support OpenDoc and we'll be able to uh, work together with, with really no, no additional effort on our part. In the area of publishing and graphics, for example, developers have been forced to create very extensive text editing capabilities where their expertise really may be in the manipulation of graphic data or manipulation of photorealistic images. Now they'll have the ability to create open doc parts that meet that market's needs, as well as teaming up with another developer to provide an open doc part to meet the text editing needs of their customers. So open doc is about true component software. Uh, which is simply letting you focus as a developer on what you do best. If you want to build the world's best way to deal with mathematical equations, or the world's best way to build you know, fractal landscapes up for backgrounds for multimedia, uh, then you can do that in OpenDoc and you know, forget the spreadsheet and making sure the word processor works right. All of that's handled for you already. You can just drop those into your application. Work on what's fabulous. It is also going to give them the opportunity to go after vertical markets in a way that they never could before. And they can add their own components and build a specialized system that they can probably sell for um, you know, maybe even 10 or 20 times uh, the cost of the software building blocks. And one of the highest barriers today for software developers is the whole distribution model. I mean, getting on to the software shelves. And with OpenDoc, applications are smaller and they're more integrated so that other options for distribution are available. 
a small software package can be cost efficiently distributed over a network. It can be unlocked on a CD-ROM. I think when people look at OpenDoc the first time, they think that the world is completely different from anything they've done before, and they couldn't possibly do the same kind of thing they do well now in this new world, because everything is so different. But that's not true. You know, if you're really great at doing some particular kind of technology, then OpenDoc gives you a chance to just make that work in a really integrated fashion with everybody else's. And that, in and of itself, is an incredible opportunity. obvious design goal is that OpenDoc had to have a lot of future growth room. It had to represent a very high quality technology which was very well suited to the future, for example, of distributed objects. Um, it had to represent the best practice of software engineering. It, so so that, that was a key design goal to really build an architecture with a future in it. The other, the flip side of that is that there was no way that OpenDoc could be a revolutionary break. OpenDoc had to preserve the investment all along the chain. And that meant the investment that developers have in their existing source code. It meant the, develop the, the investment that people have in existing systems, hardware, and uh, OSs. Uh, I'm a software evangelist. And in evangelism, we consider OpenDoc one of the last great evangelism efforts. In the past, Apple has had to go to developers and say, look, we come up with this great architecture. It's called QuickTime. Will you make these changes to your software application so it'll work with it? And then we come out with something else, and we ask, will you please make some more changes? And finally now, we come out with something which says, look, make this one last change. And the next time we come out with something, we can come out with a part editor that takes advantage of that, and then we'll interoperate inside your software package. So you'll be compatible with things that aren't even invented yet. A little bit later on, we'll see access to networks, things like the internet, uh, you know, the online services, things along those lines. Those are going to be integrated right into your program. People are going to be able to drop references that go off into a network right into the middle of your program. You won't have to do a thing. You've already adopted OpenDoc. It'll be there for you. A little bit later on, we'll have links off into the rest of the file system. The thing that's the finder now will start seeping its way into people's programs. They'll have annotations that point off to other things across the network or on the local file system. It'll be right in your program. Again, you won't have to do a thing. It'll just be in there with OpenDoc. So there's this endless list of new features, new technologies, calendar programs, personal information managers. All of these things are going to come right and live right in your program along with the, the great stuff that you're doing without any work on your part just because you adopted OpenDoc. I would argue that OpenDoc solves many of the business issues for you. It gives you a cross-platform way of delivering your product to your customers. It allows you to inter interoperate with the, the powers that be. But OpenDoc gives you something else. Software development has always been actually a rather an emotional proposition. You get an idea, you have a desire to create something, and then you create something that's actually on the edge, it's out there, it's innovative. OpenDoc lets you do that in a way that you can't do today. Uh, it gives you a way to, move, to go west, young man, to, to look back at the uh, days of the colonization of America. The place where we are now is the first wave. The folks who are out there planting their stakes on the prairie and kind of running back and to the land office saying, hey, we planted our stake. The cities will come, but today we're cutting our stakes and running back to the land office. The most compelling reason to start doing things with OpenDoc right now is because two years from now, a lot of the opportunities that are wide open today aren't going to be as wide open. You know, if you want to get in, this is the time. This is the ground floor. This is the point where the land is open and ready for people to go and get it.